Hello folks, this is Sula once again. You're listening to a video this time for Civilization 4. And what we're going to be looking at in this video today is one of my favorite things about Civ 4, which is looking at different openings. I've had a chance to go ahead and look at one opening in particular. This is an opening from one of our Pit Boss games from Realms Beyond Pit Boss number 8. This is being played actually on a mod called RB Mod. I'm not even a big fan of the Realms Beyond mod, but that's what was used for this game, so I have to use it to do this uh, opening. So what I'm going to show you here, I'm going to show you the opening that the India team played in this particular game. This was a team made up of two players with uh, maybe a couple other people giving advice, but mostly two players. Those players being uh, CFC Jester and Naker. And uh, unfortunately for them, they were ultimately eliminated in this game. They were actually the first player who ended up getting killed uh, due to a very wacky strategy that another team ended up pursuing. But anyway, that's sort of neither here nor there. Uh, after they were eliminated from the game, I asked if they'd like a little feedback. And this is my attempt to try and provide that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play through their opening here in sandbox mode. This is a save file recreating their what uh, their terrain at the start looked like. I'm going to talk you through, I'm going to go through what they did in this particular game. And then I'm going to go through and show you how I would have played this start. Because I used the same sandbox and I sat around and uh, sandboxed it myself and just showed what I would have done. Okay, so here we go. This is their starting terrain. I've built the little area where they started in sandbox mode. As it turned out, the India team started on an island by themselves, a relatively small island. So this was basically a perfect builder's paradise. No real enemies to worry about, sort of very minimal barb presence from just barbarian animals and a couple barb warriors, but really just a true farmer's paradise in terms of what they did. So I'm gonna show you what they did over the first 40 turns and up to when they planted their, first, their second city. And then I'm gonna go through and replay that showing how I would have opened. Now, this is a bit of an unusual start. It's a start that is very heavy on food Heavy on two things. It has lots of seafood. There's two crabs, a fish. There's also a corn resource over here, although it's a dry corn. There, It's not an irrigated corn. Uh, corn produces more food when it's next to water. And the music in the background is irritating me. I'm going to turn it down. There we go. Okay. Crazy singing guy was getting on my nerves a little bit there. So it's got quadruple food bonuses. It's actually a very strong start. It's got quadruple food bonuses. Uh, although three of them are seafood, which is, tends to be a little bit weaker. It also has three different lakes, lake tiles, that will get a bonus from a lighthouse later on. And it's got tons of forest to chop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven forests to chop in the starting radius. So in this game, the India team was, of course, playing as India. They were actually playing as Mansa Musa of India, Spiritual Financial. And they were a team that uh, anytime you see India and have a lot of forests, generally speaking, you want to go for an early bronze working. As it turned out, though, they also had these seafood resources. And they decided to go for fishing tech as their first tech. They uh, India in this game starts with mysticism and mining. Mysticism is kind of useless as a starting tech. Uh, mining, though, is very useful because you can go on to bronze working. But still, all the seafood at this start meant that they chose to go for fishing. And their initial build was a warrior. And they started by basically growing to size 2 while building a warrior while researching fishing tech. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a lot of, of turns really fast here because there's nothing going on while we're waiting for these builds to complete. Ignore what the AI is doing. This is just AI sieves that are randomly placed out in the fog. They're not actually important. So anyway, we're just clicking next turn for a couple turns. And on turn five, the borders will expand. And they've gone ahead and swapped from working the grassland forest over to the corn, which is the correct decision because this will allow them to grow to size 2 in 4 turns. If they work the grassland forest, it takes 6 turns. So, the, uh, the, to trade off between 3 food and 2 food, 1 production. And they are correct to want the 3 food. <coughs> it's definitely more valuable in this situation. So anyway, just growing to size 2. Not much going on. We've now got a barbed wolf to hang out with. So on turn 7, they discovered their first tech, Fishing. In Civilization 4, fishing lets you work water tiles and you can create fishing boats. That's the main thing here. Although the ability to work water tiles is kind of nice too. Well, prior to fishing, you can't even work water tiles. But now they're going to go on to bronze working. So here we go. They still need two more turns. You grow to size 2, still working that corn. So we'll go ahead and keep clicking next turn. And next turn again. Now at size 2, they have the option to work, well, 
they can work the fish, they can work the lake, it doesn't really matter. These are all two food, three commerce tiles. So they are actually going to go ahead and work the lake tile. doesn't really matter, all these tiles are functionally identical. So they chose to work the corn tile and then this lake tile. Now the reason why they do that, ignore that Buddhism message, it's the, just the AI in the fog. Now the reason why they do that is they're trying to research bronze working and they get more commerce. These little coins are commerce. That allows them to reach bron research bronze working faster. So if they were to work like this tile here, 14 turns to bronze working. By working the lake tile, 11 turns. So that's the logic there. Anyway, so they hit size 2, they finish the warrior, and now they're going to go ahead and start building a worker. In India's case, this is their unique unit, a fast worker. So they chose to work, again, the corn tile and the fish and the, excuse me the corn tile and the lake tile this is an odd decision because it makes the fast worker come out slower see they could work this grassland forest and it will come out in 12 turns but the logic was they wanted to research bronze working quickly and that way they could make use of slavery as a slavery civic which i'll get to in a minute so we just have to click next turn 10 times now very exciting here by the way as we watch our little wolf buddy run around in the fog to the right but don't mind him, he's just entertaining us right now. He's got nothing else to do. So really nothing will happen until we get to bronze working. Note how that the fast worker won't even be close to being done. So anyway, bronze working's one turn away now, and we'll get it on turn 20. Yeah, I'll I'll let all that um, text in the background. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Nimoy. Uh, I'll let all that run in the background. Anyway, so bronze working is a crucial early game tech in Civ 4. It lets you cut down forest. That's the big deal. Reveals copper. It turned out there was no copper at this start. And it also opens up slavery civic, which allows you to convert food into production. And as it turned out, as it turned out, this was a, the way that they chose to play this was to make use of slavery. So what they're going to do is swap into slavery. It does not cost them a turn of anarchy because... They are playing as a spiritual leader. Spiritual leaders don't have to deal with anarchy. So swap into Slavery Civic, and then they went ahead and they whipped the Fast Worker to completion. So cost one population in exchange for 30 production. Is it 30? I believe it's 30. So yes, one. so they traded one pop for 30 production. Now, this is kind of a nice move, but at the same time, I don't really like this play just because it drops them all the way back to size one, and it drops them down to three out of 22 food. And I really don't like that play particularly much. Uh, there are better ways to do an opening than to do this. Again, it's kind of a cutesy play, and it, and it looks really neat, but it, it's kind of not the best move that you can do here. So adopt slavery. And now they've got a worker to play around with at the cost of dropping back to size one again. So not a huge fan of that. Anyway, they've also dropped back to agriculture as their next tech. So let's go ahead and check that out, shall we? Okay, what they're going to do now is they do a fishing tech. They're going to go ahead and overflow that extra production. We have a lot of extra production from that last build. That gets saved, then it goes into the next build. That's going to go into a work boat. So that's the plan here going forward. Going to build uh, a work boat as the next build. This worker has comes out. One thing I will mention in RB Mod, workers, fast workers don't have three movement. They have mobility promotion instead. It's basically a nerf to the fast worker. So that doesn't really change things too much, but it's a little bit different. All right, what they had the worker do was to run onto one of these forests and start chopping. They actually weren't too clear on their notes just which forest they were chopping, but I believe it's this one from sort of reverse engineering. If not, it doesn't really matter too much which one of these. They're all functionally identical. So we're going to move on to a forest and start chopping. Chopping down a forest permanently removes the forest, but it gives you a bonus production in the city close to it. So forest chopping is kind of a staple of early game Civ 4 strats. Anyway, still working that corn. Now that the city has dropped down to size 1, it's got to grow back again to size 2. So working the corn, this is the highest food tile. And going to chop that work boat. Choppity chop chop. And there we go. The chop finishes up here on this tile. And now the work boat will complete. So we've got 20 production from chopping. 21 total along with one production. You always get one production each turn from the center tile. So 21 production, workboat already has 16 production in it, that'll be 37, and so it'll finish next turn. So we continue. Next up build, in their notes they said that they wanted the overflow to go into a warrior. This is, again in my opinion, a mistake. They're overflowing 7 precious early game production into a warrior that doesn't really matter that much. 
This was a misplay in my opinion, but this was something that they did. So I'm going to overflow that into a warrior. Here's the workboat. The workboat can go to either the crabs or the fish. And they made the correct choice to go to the fish. That's because if you send it to the crabs, the crab tile will become a four food tile if you connect the crabs. But the fish becomes a five food tile. So it's just strictly a better tile to go and improve the fish. Now the worker's done chopping. What's the worker going to do? Oh, he's going to head up here and continue chopping. And again, this is what makes India so great. You can move on to a forest and start chopping it immediately. This is why the Indian Fast Worker is the best unit in the game. Even in this nerf version, it's still probably the best unit in the game. So now we've got the workboat, and the workboat will go ahead and connect the fish. So there we go. And now we have a five food tile. So had been working that corn tile. The corn tile is three food. Now this tile produces five food instead. So very useful. Um, obviously you want to connect food resources as soon as possible, so that's what the workboat allows us to do. Connect that fish, and now the city grows much faster. So it will only take two more turns to grow to size two. Before it would have taken three, so it grows much faster. Alright, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cancel this chop. I believe that what they did, I'm not entirely sure that they did it this way, but based on reading their, their posts over at Realms Beyond, I'm pretty sure that they canceled the forest chop here. We've connected fish, very nice. So there's our fish, adds health in the city. I believe what they did is they canceled the forest chop there, they moved on to this tile, chopped this tile for one turn, and you'll see why in a minute, because Delhi's about to grow to size two. So right now, I'll click next turn, Delhi hits size two, and now we can work two tiles being size two. They went ahead and they swapped over to building a fast worker, working the fish and the corn tiles again, and now the other worker can move back to this tile, and that chop can go into the fast worker. So now the fast worker will come out in six turns and actually faster than that because we're going to finish that worker with another forest chop on this tile over here. So uh, all this is, you know, all this is not bad. This is pretty decent management overall. So here we go. We're going to continue chopping this, continue building the fast worker. Here we get another tech in the form of agriculture. What agriculture lets you do is build farms. Very basic early game tech lets you build farms. There's a corn here. We want to build a farm on that. And at this point, what they did was they went ahead and researched sailing as their next tech. So anyway, the forest chop completes. It should be popping up here any second now. Maybe it's just in the event logger. There it is. Clearing a forest has created 20 production for Delhi. So there we go. That forest chop finishes the fast worker. And this will go ahead and... Uh, allow that second worker to come out so not bad like I said not not too bad but it, it can be done better is sort of the thing okay at this point they went ahead and started building a settler so I'm gonna go ahead and make that swap right here still working these same two tiles but now that we have two workers these workers can go over here and they can start farming the corn so that first worker wastes a turn walking over there not much you can do about that and this, the other worker can move to the corn and start farming it so go ahead and start farming Hi, hi, a wolf buddy. And now this guy will farm. So for right now, that tile still produces three food. And watch one more turn. And now the farm completes. And now it produces five food. So the time to build the settler has dropped as well. It dropped from, I think, 12 to, it was like 13 turns down to 10, something like that. But uh, we can actually improve on this too, because we can do more chopping. All right, so continuing on. We want to get that settler out, so watch. The workers are going to burn another wasted turn of movement, and this is what you want to try to avoid in the micro plan. They wasted a turn of movement walking back into Delhi. You want to try to avoid wasting worker turns wherever possible. When playing as India, it's very easy to avoid wasting worker turns because the fast worker can move onto forests. And in the base game, in the non RB mod, uh, Realms Beyond mod game, you can just move, get, you get three moves with the fast worker instead of two. So, anyway, that's a little bit wasteful, but that's how it's written. That's the plan I'm following. Now, at this point, they can move south of Delhi and start chopping this forest. So, here we go. They both move here and start chopping the forest. Hit next turn. Forest take three total worker turns to finish. So there we go. That's one work, one turn's worth of chopping. There's the 20 extra production. Now can move down here and chop this next forest tile. So we'll go ahead and do that. This guy starts, and then the other worker will move on this next turn, and he'll finish the forest chop. And there we go. Settler just barely finishes. So there we go. Note that there was 71 production into the settler. Eight plus 21. That's 29 for exactly 100 out of 100 production into the settler. Very nicely done there. 
like I said, I, I think that you can do play a stronger start, but that's still pretty well done there overall. Okay, so the settler has come out. Now the question is, where do you send this settler? Where does the settler go? And the answer that the India team came up with was to send the settler here onto this tile, onto the tile um, three south of Delhi. Uh, I also do not believe that's the best tile to go to. But, uh, well, we'll get to that in a little bit. So they're going to make another nice little move here. They're going to go ahead and they actually chopped this forest tile before the settler went onto it. That's because that forest will get wasted when the settler goes ahead and uh, sets up shop there. So we'll go ahead and finish the chop. That will add some production to Delhi. Not as much. Note that we only got 10 production. That's because it was outside our borders. And you don't get as much for chops outside your borders. But that forest would have been wasted otherwise. So anyway, now we can move down here. And go ahead and build the second city. Bombay, I don't. they named it something else. I don't know what it was. And now we can go ahead. And from here, this worker can... Oh, I don't know. Can probably head to this tile and chop it or something like that. But this is the situation that they were in on turn 38. So two cities, size 2, size 1. They have in the first city the... Um, the corn tile and the fish have been improved. The two crab tiles have not been improved as yet. This warrior will be completing. And down here, this this city is probably is either working the crab tile, the unimproved crab, or one of these grassland forests. I'm not sure which one. It wasn't too clear. So this is a decent start. As I said, it's it's not bad, but I think you can do better. So they had 16 food and 21 GNP. Uh, 16 food, 3 production, 21 GMP. So we'll try to keep that in mind. So that's what that start looked like. I'm going to go ahead and let's just restart again. And I'll show you what I think that you should do with this start on uh, looking at the sandbox. So here we go. Right at the start again. Put it in debug mode again so we can clear out that fog of war. And this start relies very heavily on two things. Number one, on the fact that this is an isolated start, that there is no one else on this island. Which you could, which, you know, this team figured out very quickly in about 10 turns. They knew they were isolated. So, uh, wouldn't really have changed things too much. You would have figured that out early. So, it relies on being isolated because it actually doesn't build any military units at all. It relies on being isolated. And then, secondly, relies extremely heavily on the fast worker and early forest chops. So, we'll go ahead, plan on the same tile. That is the correct tile to start the city on. But I'm not going to build a warrior first. I think that that was wasteful. I'm going to build a worker first. Uh, and I'm not going to research fishing first because I don't need fishing first. What I need is forest chops as fast as humanly possible. So I'm going to start with bronze working first instead. And again, this is a very common start for India. If you're India, because India is one of the sieves that starts with mining, India is one of the sieves that starts with mining tech. You can immediately go on to bronze working. And, and not all sieves can do this because different sieves have different starting techs. But for India, because you start with mining, because you have the fast worker, going for early bronze working is often a good call. And I believe that it's the best way to go in this situation. I played around with a couple starts, and I believe it's the best way to go. Now, it doesn't matter which tile I work. It's going to take 15 turns to produce this worker regardless. Any of these tiles... Same result, 15 turns for a worker. So let's get ready to hit next turn a whole bunch of times because we have nothing to do until this worker finishes. Literally nothing to do except sit here at size one, hitting next turn. So the borders pop. We can work the corn tile, but it doesn't matter. It's still 10 turns to finish this worker no matter which tile we work. So no choice in the matter. Uh, can't change that. Of course, in a real game, you'd be exploring. You'd be using the scout to explore the terrain in an actual game. But this is just a sandbox. This is just a simulation. So we already know what the land looks like. And we're just simulating an opening to this game. There's the AI discovering religious texts again. Just ignore that in the background. Again, there's nothing I can do until the worker is done. You can just watch our, our, our wolf friend run around on the east. And now, here we go. Finally, turn 15. The worker's about to finish. So I'll hit next turn, and that worker will come out. And now I can actually start to do stuff. So note this. Note that I'm actually one beaker away from finishing bronze working. So what I can do, and this is sort of very, very unusual city mi micromanagement. Don't do this unless you're a real pro at Civ 4, guys. Is I can actually work this tile here. I can work the 1-1-1 wine tile. One food, one production, one commerce. And that will allow me to finish bronze working next turn. So see up there at the top how it goes from 2 to 1. So this is actually, believe it or not, the tile I want to work is the wines tile. So I can start chopping next turn. And I'm going to start a second worker. I'm not happy with one worker. I want two. Now, 
I can move this guy, I can move this fast worker, but I can't chop this turn. I still need to wait for Brian's working to finish. So I might as well move on to a tile where I'm going to lose movement points anyway, such as this forested hill. Forested hill tile you cannot move on to and start chopping. It takes two full movement points no matter what. So I'll move on to this tile and you know, I lose my turn, but that's fine because I couldn't start chopping until next turn anyway. So let's do this. We'll finish Brian's working. You can hear Nimoy talk in the background again. I'll go ahead and revolt to slavery, but it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter if I revolt here. Yes, yes, very nice. So I revolted to slavery, but it doesn't even matter because I'm not going to be using slavery in this opening at all. All right, so I moved on to this tile. Now I can go ahead and start chopping. Same thing, I'll go ahead and start chopping on the forested hill tile. And what tile do I want the city to work? Well, once again, I actually want to get fishing in six turns. And if I work one of these other tiles, it's seven turns. So I actually do want to stay on this one, 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 one food, one production, one commerce tile, which is very unorthodox. So again, uh, for, for those of you watching at home, don't do this unless you really know what you're doing. You want to stick to high yield tiles, but this is one case where the wine tile actually is the one that I want. So anyway, we'll stick with that. Once again, still, still drops a turn off fishing. So stick with the tile for now. And a forest chop's going to complete here. So now the fast worker is closer to completion, down to 11 turns. But of course, it won't take 11 turns because of our forest chops. Next turn again. So I'm going to move here to the west. I'm going to go ahead and chop this tile. There's another religion getting founded. Still the same thing. It's still, a, still faster for me to work the wines tile as far as fishing goes. So we want one more turn there. And now, finally, with two turns left to go, watch, now, finally, it is, in fact, faster to, I can now, it's now the same time to finish, fi to research fishing. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to pick up the corn tile. So now it doesn't matter which tile I work, I will still finish fi fishing in two turns. Okay, so I'm going to work the corn tile because that's the tile I want once the chopping is done. Okay, so another turn. And there we go. Note that the fast worker completes. We're going to have the fast worker done on the same turn that we finished fishing. So guess what? I can overflow into a work boat, which is what I want. Here's fishing. I already explained what that did. And I want agriculture there. So in terms of the tech path, I did the same tech path as the India team. Uh, some combination of bronze working, fishing, and agriculture. But note that I went for bronze working first and fishing tech second. Fishing first was a mistake because I wasn't building a work boat. If I'm not going to rush a work boat, there's no reason to rush fishing tech. It makes more sense to get chopping and play faster and only then go for uh, fishing tech. I don't need it until this turn because I've been building two workers. I went, I went worker worker to start in the capital. So I don't need fishing until now. And it actually lines up really nicely overall. So now I have two workers. I'm still size one. This city hasn't grown at all. We haven't gotten even one point of food into the city's food box yet. But now we've got two workers. And that's a really big deal. So two workers on turn 22. That's pretty solid. This guy is going to move to the northwest and he's going to chop. And then this guy is going to move to the northeast and he's going to chop as well. And as soon as they're both done chopping, we'll go ahead and finish a work boat. And that'll get Delhi off to a good start. So up to this point, we really haven't done anything. We're on a really slow start. Look here at the score. Note how the AIs are all ahead at this point in time. We have like no score points whatsoever. Well, that'll start to change because we've been investing in workers. And the workers are about to turbocharge this growth, this start. Uh, turbocharge the growth on this start. Uh, good comparison I can make is this is like a Zerg fast expansion in StarCraft. You're investing in growth. You're investing in the future by building these workers. Anyway, so the double chop comes in. That's 40 production. So instead of uh, work boat goes from 5 out of 30, we add 41 to that. So that'll be, what, 46 out of 30. And that work boat will then be able to go over to the fish. That was the correct call that Naker and Jester made. That you do definitely want that uh, fish tile. I'm going to go ahead though, and I'm going to not start a settler. I'm going to go and build another work boat here. So move up here and go back to chopping. The work boat heads over to the fish tile, and then this guy moves to the forest, and he'll start chopping too. So that will be. We've already bulldozed four forests. We're about to bulldoze two more. Just keep chopping them down because production is most important in the early game. There's literally nothing more important than the early turns in Civ 4. All right, so the workboat 
has connected the fish. We're going to swap to that tile. It's a much better tile. Five food and three commerce as opposed to just three food. So instead of four turns to grow, it'll take two turns to grow. And that actually lines up quite nicely. In terms of the food, you need 22 food to grow to size two. We went three, 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 so 12 food. And now we go five, five, so that's 10 food for 22 total. So no wasted food. We hit 22 over the course of six total turns. Three, 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 five, five. Works out very nicely. A little bit of a coincidence, but it works out nicely. Okay, so workers are still chopping. And now we have fish. Yay, that's nice. And there we go. Two chops finished. And once again, now we're going to complete another workboat. And oh, look at this. The workboat finishes. The same turn we go to size two, we'll be able to grow right onto that crab's tile. So watch. I'll go ahead and click next turn. Examine the city. I'll move out the workboat onto this crab tile, and we'll connect the connect the crabs, and watch. The minute we hit size 2, we have two improved tiles already right there waiting to be worked. A fish tile and a crab's tile. So the city will grow again, now at plus 7 food per turn. We will grow over 4 turns. I can't actually improve that with this start. That's the fastest I can do it. Now, as far as all that production, we get 29 overflow. I'm going to build another workboat here to connect the third food resource. Even though the city's not size 3 yet, I'm still going to go ahead and connect that. So anyway, uh, now the workers, you might say, well, what are the workers going to do? Well, we can go ahead. We're, we're actually going to have them farm next, but agriculture won't be done for two more turns. So I'll go ahead, waste a turn here, but any turn mo spent moving onto this forest would, forested hill would be wasted. So I'll go ahead, have them move onto the hill on this turn where they can't really do anything. Here, I'll just go ahead and build a warrior. Don't really want a warrior, but we'll just dump production into that. Now I've connected the other crabs, and granted this doesn't do anything right now. I can only work two of the three crab tiles, but it'll be useful in a minute when we hit size three. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Meanwhile, the workers have moved onto this hilltop. I'm going to have them both chop on this work on this hill, and then I'm going to go ahead and cancel that chop so that I can use them next turn. So this forest has nearly been chopped. It only needs one more turn of chopping. But the key thing is we're about to discover agriculture. So we'll go ahead and finish that. Now we can build farms. And the next tech I want is actually not sailing, as they did in their game. Uh, what I actually want is the wheel. That's a more useful tech here. So the two workers are going to move onto this farm tile, onto the uh, corn tile, and start farming it. So we will then can have another improved tile to play around with. Next turn, we're not quite done yet, but watch this, right as we hit size 3, we're going to go ahead and finish that farm. So, I will go ahead and swap that over, because this is a better tile to work. I would rather have 5 food, instead of having the 4 food on the crab tile. And now that I'm size 3, I'm going to go ahead and swap to a settler. So, note how much food we're getting here. We can build the settler in 10 turns before it chops. And that'll get cut down as soon as we actually start chopping. So I do have an extra movement point on this worker here. It takes five turns to build a farm. We did two turns, two turns, one turn. So this guy I'm going to have move back up here and finish off that particular chop. So unfortunately that is another turn wasted, but we'll go ahead and clear that. And that'll go ahead and go into the settler here. So the settler will be uh, continuing to make some progress. This guy, unfortunately, I am going to have to waste worker turns here. There's not a whole lot he can do. If I had the wheel tech, I could have him move onto this tile and road, but don't have it, so unfortunately just going to have to waste turns. This is again where the nerf in the RB mod really hurts the fast worker. With three moves, I could have moved down to here, and then I would have been able to start chopping immediately, but sadly can't do that. have to waste a turn or two here. So anyway, this guy can't really do a whole lot. I can put one turn into mining. That's just to avoid wasting a turn. This guy will move down here and start chopping on this tile. Unfortunately, I have another wasted turn. There's nothing I can do about that. Sad, I hate to waste these turns, but sometimes you do, especially in the early game. All right, now time to start chopping in Delhi. This guy, instead of continuing mining, which we don't really need, I will have a move into Delhi, and that's so I can start building a road next turn. So watch how we do this. Go ahead, hit next turn. We go ahead and finish the wheel. Wheel lets you build roads. Another very basic early game tech. At this point, it doesn't really matter that much what I research. I'm going to go ahead and pick pottery because I'm expecting to want granaries if this game were to continue. But I'm actually not going to play this more than like a couple other turns. So this guy moves south and builds a road. So go ahead and do that as this other guy chops. And watch how this is going to line up next turn. So the road finishes, the chop finishes, and the settler finishes as well. We're actually going to have some pretty nice overflow from this. That's 31 production this turn. 
we only need 100, so that'll go up to 106, and there'll be six overflow uh, into something, presumably a warrior. So why the road? You know, why put the emphasis on the road? Well, as far as where to send the settler, I believe the, pl the proper place to send the settler is to this tile right here. Let me ping it. Yes, that's the little ping feature in Civ 4. It's the P key. So why this tile? Why is this tile better than the tile to the right? Well, this tile is useful because it allows it to share the seafood resources with the capital. Uh, by planting on this tile, this tile cannot share the fish. And that's actually a pretty big deal. Uh, you want to be able to share that fish tile because um, if it's on this tile, it can't do that. And you're not able to share that fish. So that actually does make a very big deal. And I'll even show why that is. So that's why I believe this tile is a better one to plant on. And uh, granted, there is a trade-off. You do lose the sheep. Um, by planting on here, you won't be able to get the sheep. But the sheep tile is, first of all, not even that great of a tile. It's only a three food, one hammer tile. It's not that great. Secondly, this tile can't be improved without a border pop. Like, that's the thing. I can found the city here, but I need to build a monument even to be able to use the sheep, which makes it not very useful early game. I'd much rather plant here, be able to borrow the fish tile immediately, and then I can plant another city over here. Watch, I'll go ahead and do it with signs. So, you know, I'll plant a city here, and then I can go ahead and plant another later city on this tile here. That's where I would put my third city. Immediately able to work the sheep and able to work the silver in first ring without needing a border pop. Don't have to fool around with monuments or anything like that. So basically, you put the cities close together, they can share tiles, they'll be able to be working, building up cottages on these tiles, and it's just a better placement as far as putting the core together. So that's what I would do. I believe this is a stronger place to put the second city. And why did I build that road tile here? Well, by putting a road on that tile, it allows me to move the settler like this. As soon as it comes out, let me go ahead and grab that settler. It allows me to move like this, and I can move right onto that tile in one turn. So basically, I avoid wasting a turn by building that road. The other thing I can do is my workers are in position. Watch, they can both move and be in position to chop that be in position to chop here for the new city. I'll go ahead and make sure cancel that to make sure it doesn't go in the wrong city. Uh, Delhi gets some nice overflow into this warrior, which we probably do want to build because hey, there's still no. I still currently have zero military units at all, just a scout, no military units. But hey, it's an isolated start. We can get away with that, right? So anyway, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and build Bombay right here on this tile instead. Start working a workboat and note that because these cities are. Uh, share our, you know, they can be connected within our culture. We actually already have a trade route instantly between the two. So that's another two points of commerce, one in the capital, one in the second city. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this chop goes into Bombay. So there we go. That will nearly knock out the workboat. And we'll go ahead and start chopping towards the completing that workboat. Meanwhile, Bombay's not going to work this grassland tile here. What we're going to do is we're going to give it the fish tile to have it grow quickly, and then Delhi takes over the grassland corn. So you might say, well, wait, why did you improve all these tiles if you couldn't even work them? That's why, right here. So when the second city gets planted, we can trade it the fish, and then it'll be able to borrow that from the capital. Now watch this, we'll finish chopping out this workboat here for Bombay. There we go, they're connected, we have a trade route. I'll turn research back on at 100%. I had to run 0% for one turn to build up some gold. So go ahead and we'll go ahead and chop that. And this will finish the workboat in Bombay. Delhi's about to grow as well. So let's just run one more turn here. And I'll stop here on turn, what is it, 41? At this point, we can build whatever, probably a warrior, so that um, you know these two cities can actually have warriors. But the, we finished a workboat for Bombay. Bombay uses that to uh, put an improvement on the... Um, on the crabs, so now I can take the crabs over. It does not get slowed in growth. Still, what is it? Still three turns either way. So we'll take that. And Delhi can go ahead and re grab the fish tile right here. And at this point, we can build a settler, but we can build a fast worker. I would probably build another worker at this point. We've got pottery popping. We can go ahead and use slavery, civic, if we want to. We can go ahead and have these workers chop this tile if we want. They'll be able to start building cottages next turn. Or I can connect these two cities with a road for movement. At this point, it, I'd have to sandbox it further. I was only playing up to the first 40 turns. But if you check out the demographics, um, I mean, the food and the GMP are vastly higher than they were in that last one. I think it was 16 food before, and the GMP was not 
was not anywhere near this high. But that's because I'm working more improved tiles. I'm working five improved tiles on this particular start, as opposed to that previous one, which, again, if you remember, didn't have the two crabs improved, and it didn't have this other crab improved either. Now, granted, it could have chopped out a workbook for this tile, but... Um, yeah, but I mean, it, that just makes a difference. So I have burned down all the forests, and uh, granted, this would this would have affected the strategy. The India team turned a lot of those forests into a great lighthouse. They built a great lighthouse using some of them. So they, you wouldn't have been able to do this. They wouldn't have been able to do that with this start, and that's a fair criticism to be made. But I believe that getting off to a fast start greatly overrides anything else that you can do in Civilization 4. So this is how I would have played the start. I probably would not have attempted to build a wonder, but I would have tried to get the growth curve up and running as fast as humanly possible. And I believe that this gets you off to a much faster start overall than uh, the start that I played out before, which, which granted wasn't bad. It was pretty solid in all honesty, but I think that this is stronger. So anyway, that's my critique of how I would have played this. This is a little interesting way to look at openings. I love looking at openings in Civ 4. It's a really fun game to do them because there's so many ways that they can play out. And at this point, it would really be wide open. Do you go for, uh, I would probably go for sailing next. Maybe, I'm not sure. I might have wanted to look for resources, wanted to look for horses or something. I don't know. But it would have been fun to play out. And in any case, I hope that you guys watching this enjoy seeing some of these alternative ways to start things off as well. Because at this point, these cities are going to grow really, really fast. Um, they're going to grow very fast. And it's just a matter then of starting to lay down cottages and starting to grow onto cottages. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you again soon. Have a great week. Take care.